Hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, Skip Allen Paints, or the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Uh, this is video six in a series of videos on how I set up my uh, Wacom Cintiq to work with Painter 2015. Okay, so we were looking at functions and we looked at express keys. Now we're moving over to the touch ring. Uh, in the Cintiq, you have two touch rings, at least the Cintiq 24-inch uh, HD touch. I, I'm not sure about all of the Cintiqs. The Wacom Intuos 4 and 5 and the Intuos Pro, I believe, only have one uh, touch ring. But both probably have three functions that you can program for the touch ring. Now, what's different about the touch ring is that when you program a keystroke, you're not programming one keystroke, you're programming two. And the idea is that you're going to run your finger around the ring and you go from one keystroke to another. And so, like in the case of zoom, which is the first one is, you would be able to zoom in or zoom out of uh, the document. So let's just look at the keystroke first. The keystroke has, is, like I said, it's made up of two different um, keystrokes. The one on top is uh, if you are circling the, the ring in a counterclockwise motion, that will give you the keystroke on top. If you're going in a clockwise motion as you circle with your finger, that will give you uh, the uh, opposite direction. <clears throat> now, just like before, if you want to clear this, you'd have to use clear or delete. Then you would come to the next one and clear, delete, or add, whatever you have to do, and then name it. So we're going to say, OK. Now let's just go and see how this works. So if I come over here and I click on the first little button next to the um, zoom key, that tells me that I'm, I'm uh, next to the touch ring. That tells me I'm in the zoom category. So as I move my finger around the outside, you'll see that it zooms in. Now, I'm not sure that I will use zoom that much because Painter has a very wonderful zoom function using touch. You can just take two fingers and increase or decrease the size. And it does it much smoother than the zoom on the touch ring. But it also uh, gets you off. Um, you know, it, it, it uh, rotates it a bit as you're going as well. So in some ways, the touch ring is better for that. It's just a little bit clunky. Uh, it's not a smooth, uh, it probably goes in five degree incre increments or something like that. Okay, so let's see what I did on the next one. And that's kind of normal, uh, the way you work this one. But the next one is called composite method. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, let's look at the composite method first. So what I'm going to do is open up um, my layers panel. panel and I'm going to add a layer, and I'll just uh, fill that layer with uh, color. And we'll fill it with the current color. And then I'm going to add another layer, and we'll fill that with another color. Um, we'll fill it with a pink. There we go. Now, <clears throat> if I come over here to the default menu, and I click on default, then I can use my arrow keys to go down the uh, list of composite um, composite method. So the first one is gel, and then colorize, and then reverse out, shadow map, magic combine, pseudo color, normal, dissolve, multiply screen, overlay, soft light, hard light, dark and light and difference, hue, saturation, color, luminosity, and gel cover. Once I get there, I have to go in the opposite direction using the up arrow keys, and I can go up. Now, I can also use, if um, my cursor is hanging over the top of the composite method so that it's blue, and I'm using the mouse to put my cursor there, if my mouse has a wheel on it, I can turn the wheel and change uh, 
the composite method like that. If I'm not covering it, see, the wheel won't do it. It goes back to um, the bucket tool. But if I cover, then my wheel will move between those. Okay, so what am I doing here that's so different? Well, let's go back to default. And what I'm going to do is come over here and select the middle button, which is composite method. Now, when I take my composite method and I start going around the ring, I'm also, and look, see, I don't have that over it. I'm changing the composite method with the hue ring. Now, I've shown this to a couple of folks who have Macs, and it doesn't seem to work for them, but it might work for you. I, I don't know what the problem was, but it definitely works on a PC. And that is a little something unusual. So what shortcut key am I using for this? Well, remember it's the down arrow and the up arrow. Well, let's go to our Wacom uh, tablet. We'll go to keystroke. And what I have is down and up. And all I did was when I was up here, let's clear this one. I just clicked on the down arrow. And this one, if it were cleared, I would click on the up arrow. And that gives me down, up, and since it moves between these, if I'm, if I'm going in a counterclockwise method, the down arrow is taking effect. If I'm going in a clockwise, the up arrow is taking effect. And then all I needed to do was put in composite method. And we're all set for that particular one. And the next one is freehand straight line stroke. Okay, freehand straight line stroke. What does that mean? Well, let's go down here and we'll add another layer. We've got our funky line here. And so when I'm on the paintbrush, if you look right up here, you've got a freehand stroke. And what the freehand stroke does is, let's see, we don't need my... Uh, mail open there. But what the freehand stroke does, if I can find, my, I've lost my pen again. Every time I sit down or move around, I'll lose my pen. Here it is. Um, okay, so freehand allows me to draw like that. Freehand, right? Let's take this back to its original size. There you go. So I'm drawing freehand. If I click on the straight line stroke, that means I can put a dot somewhere and another dot and another dot and another dot, and it's drawing in between these. Let's make the, the size of it a little bigger. And it's not, this brush is not showing this very well. I guess it's because it's a particle brush. What happens if I make it really big? I, I should just switch to a brush, but I'm curious now why that isn't showing. It could be the color is odd. So let's uh, open up my color selection. Let's make that much lighter. There we go. And it's it's doing it's kind of doing something in between, but it's it's not doing like I would expect. And that's kind of fun. So we're going to delete that and let's switch to something that will show us better how this actually works. So I'll come down to pins and I don't know what pin, thick and thin pin is fine. All right, so if I click here, 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 see I'm getting straight line. All right, so if I go back to here and change this direction until uh-oh, I'm not, oh, I'm sorry, I'm the wrong one, freehand straight hand. When I change that, you see it went back here to freehand, and now I'm back to freehand. If I go the other direction, I can take it back to straight. And then back to uh, freehand. Now, I do use the straight a line uh, fairly frequently for different things. Another shortcut, which would probably work just as well, 
would be to hold the shift key down. But I don't think we could put that on um, on the uh, <clears throat> the uh, <laughs> touch ring. Sorry, <laughs> having difficulty remembering what they're called. OK, so now let's go back and we'll look at the other side. Now, on the other side, I've got brush size, which is another one that's normal. The keystroke is set up for uh, bracket keys, and that's our normal um, shortcut key for brush size. Now, why do I have that if I have brush size set on the express keys and so forth? Well, I found that occasionally when I'm using brush size here, it doesn't work for me. It'll it'll stop on me. But if I use brush size over here, oops, sorry, using the wrong thing. If I use brush size over here, it doesn't it, it doesn't stick on me. It works fairly easily. So in the event, it's really there as uh, a protection in the event that the normal brush size that I have over here on my express keys doesn't work. I've got a second way to do it. And that may be wasted um, um, touch ring. But I don't use the touch ring on the right side very much because my right hand is dominant and I would have to change it. Uh, I would have to, you know, it's like take my uh, stylus out of my right hand or uh, hold it up in a way that I can then uh, use my finger going around the touch ring. OK, so the next one is record stroke. Um, and before I go any further, too, you have these speeds on here. If it's something where you're just changing the size of a brush, the speed can be middle to high. Uh, zoom, you need to go a little slower because it, it goes pretty rapidly. Composite method needs to be slow because you want to have a chance to go between these composite methods and look at it while you're working. So again, the speed of this should be slow. The freehand straight hand, that really needs to be real slow because that's just a sort of toggle back and forth between two different uh, shortcuts. And I forgot to show you what the shortcut was for this. The shortcut is B for brush and V for straight hand or B for uh, freehand and V for straight line uh, stroke. So it's those two um, uh, shortcut keys. With with record stroke, it's shift A and shift A. Now, wait a second. Let's think about this. Is it shift A and shift A? I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to come up to brushes. Um, and look at record stroke and I've got shift A and I have playback stroke shift B. But were those originally there? Hmm, I'm not sure. So now we have something else that we need to look at. Where did I get these two shortcut keys? And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. It's time to start looking at how to make keystrokes shortcut keystrokes for Painter 2015. Okay, talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.